All right, I'm going to do a general reading for the sign of Virgo, rising, sun, moon, or any Virgo placements you might have. Also, if you have um, knowledge of your progressions, if you have any Virgo progressions, you may want to check this out. Let's um, get into it. I was just shuffling here. I'm going to follow up a tarot reading with an astrological analysis. Now for the tarot reading, I'm doing a nine card spread with a bottom card and a cut card. And I'm using the mythic tarot from Liz Green. One card came out, I'm going to shuffle a few more times and then we'll pull. After I lay the cards out, I'm going to look them over and get a feel for what I'm seeing and then we'll get into it. So today um, was the Leo New Moon and that's what this reading is pertaining. What are the energies? What's the advisement? What's the um, symbology that I can share with you that you may resonate and uh, whatever doesn't resonate, it's just words. Take what feels right and uh, leave the rest, of course. All right, we're starting to get messy now. Interesting, very interesting. Mm. All right, so first card hit the floor reversed, so I'm taking it reversed. It's the Queen of Wands reversed. So you can see that fire is in the air here, being fed by the potential. What is potential to us? Um, how do we learn in life? It's ignorance. Potential is that which you cannot truly imagine because when you try to imagine it, when you've got a conception of it, you castrate it through trying to put forward your um, intention into things. No, it doesn't mean we can't create things, we can't have goals, we can't um, execute plans accordingly. But when it comes from a place of passion, the passion is oftentimes mired in the analysis paralysis of old loops, old dynamics, things that uh, hold us true to an egoic construct we have built and created for ourselves through our experiences so being that the Queen of Wands is reversed here, it seems like there is a, an awareness of the potential through this budding new passion. And the passion seems new because we're allowing it to cultivate itself in a way with which we aren't controlling it. That leads us into this next card, naturally, the High Priestess. The High Priestess is highly intuitive. It is um, the divine counterpart of the Hierophant. Now you can see here she's holding, um, what is that? Looks like an armadillo actually. Or a mutated Monsanto apple or something. She's holding a spear in her right hand, the Yang hand. In the left hand, she's got these flowers. Some of them are just falling out of her hand. She's not holding on too tightly to the beauty with which she um, can create from because she knows she can find more, she can cultivate more. 
what's in the right hand, it looks like it's a formation of a new world to me. That's how I feel with that card. Now she's in the cave of the self, which is um, a temple, the temple of the self. Behind her is this fertile valley, the plains, the hills, the uh, river, the emotions flowing. She can step out back into that world anytime she wants, but she's down here for a reason. She's creating new worlds. Next card here, we have the Page of Wands. This is the feral youth carrying the torch, the purity of the child within. Untethered to the landscape, leaping high, clear of the peaks and valleys. The head and the emotions are uh, balanced on top of the instincts. The transformative expression of Virgo is Aries. And you can see here in this card, the uh, flame is being held overhead into the sky again. The potential is being realized, but it isn't being controlled, it's just being held. As this uh, youth jumps through the sky on this golden ram, the air, the wind is feeding the passion. So it is in the motion, it is in the unknowing which is feeding the passion. Tempering it in a way, cultivating it. There could be passionate new ideas coming to you or from within you. And they could be from other people. They could be from news. They could be from the symbology of life. They could be returning to the child within through the memories, through the, uh, the awareness of the felt presence of experience that you cultivated through life from past memories. Next is the Ace of Cups. And look at this maiden. She's got quite a massive cup there. She's pretty powerful. Now that's a golden chalice. It's holding the potential of the ineffable. All around her is water. Even in the sky, the clouds, you know, it's just a different form. The Pisces in the sky, the dream. So there might be a wellspring of new emotional um, energy flowing through you as you feed and cultivate your passion by allowing it to grow, allowing the constructs around us to um, fall away, to break down so that new life can be grown, can be realized. And we're followed up with the Ace of Swords, another powerful card here. So the Ace of Cups to the Ace of Swords. So realizations now coming to mind. I mean, that's the star card when you combine these in my mind because the star is where you're pouring in the lights of the heavens through the emotional awareness that grows within us. And so here you're holding the sword of truth. Epiphanies. You can see the gleam in the um, illusions and delusions of the Piscean dream here high above the mountain peaks. You're firmly grounded. You've got your fancy gear on and you're holding the sword of truth. You're beginning to realize how sharp the mind is and how you can utilize it in service to the self. This um. The plain she's standing on is pretty barren wasteland. It's pretty dry. So there is a, um, but behind her, it looks like there is a storm cloud brewing. It looks like a wave. So perhaps through your awareness, you might bring new emotional um, cultivation to your surroundings to create a fertile landscape. Next, we have the Seven of Wands here. So we can see two kingly presences to the uh, right, battling four to the left. But if you look closely, you can see they're all fighting one another. They're not really sure what they're fighting, actually. 
So we hold the fire within us, we cultivate this fire, this spirit within us, and then we find form for the tension. So old dynamics. Um, when you stand with your fire, other people might feel lack. They may feel like um, like they want to pull you into their world because they see that you're cultivating the passion within yourself. They want to tap into that. They may want to pull your passion out so that you can't grow too strong, grow too big. So that you can't lead yourself out of the darkness. And sometimes we do have to fight just to maintain our sanity, to maintain our place. But there's an awareness here coming, you've got the crown on, that you don't need to fight these games. The only fight that really matters is the one within ourselves because that's the one that leads us to our creative potential. King of Wands, the wisdom of the creative power and the most balanced expression and how to share that. You can see there's fertile valleys behind this king. We've got the ram behind the king. It's the white ram. This is the purity of the innocence and the kingdom off in the distance. But you can see the king is just sitting in the field on the throne. The king knows that the true power is in the kingdom of the self. So we are coming from this um, awareness, getting from dropping the queen of wands energy and cultivating the masculine expression of what that is through guided intuition, through balanced intuition. And the chart that I'm going to show you is going to speak on this. I'm seeing a lot of parallels to the energies of these times. Now this is leading us to the Eight of Cups. Transformation through release. Now you can see those Eight Cups are stacked very nicely, very Virgoan. It's a pyramid here in a desolate plain. Behind that is the emotional ocean. Overhead the moon shining. Awareness. Illuminating the path. So she seeks the truth of her own emotional fulfillment. It's not found in the world or the waters of what once was, but where she's going and what she's cultivating through this newly growing awareness of her own contentment, rewilding that uh, child within, cultivating that fire within the self, finding a healthy, um, optimal way to express that. And this is leading us to the Five of Pentacles. Sometimes when we're coming into new power, new realizations, we don't feel we deserve it. We've dropped so many balls, we've done so many things wrong, we've made so many mistakes. Who are we to claim our own power, our own independence? Who are we to view ourselves in a bright light? But you can see this uh, person, this figure in tattered robes, he's leaving the Tower of Lack. Five Pentacles. It was a foundation, it was a creation, but it was one that bound us to expectations and beliefs of an old way of being. The moon is guiding this man just like the moon is guiding her. So we're coming into a, the alchemical wedding of our balance, the masculine and the feminine. One is in form, what we have created in this world, and one is within us, the cultivation of our emotional awareness. Both are being led by the intuition, by the moon, by the uh, subtle emotions. And now we can see here, we've got the power of this knight here. Looks like the knight slayed the beast down there. The beast of burden lays on old terra firma. Now you're taking flight, the pegasus to new a new world, the one you were creating here, perhaps. 
we can see where the child is being reborn as the warrior. And the warrior is holding now the flame in the left hand where it should be. Within us, it is the, uh, the awareness that we have the strength to take in all knowledge and be able to balance out decisions based off of what feels correct for us and what nourishes our spirit. Now on the cut, this card was on the bottom. Behind that was the King of Swords, it appears. Maybe it wanted to make an appearance. So it kind of speaks to the balance. In this depiction, he's holding this um, scales. This thing would focus, there you go. And on the cut, we have the Nine of Wands. Now the Wounded Warrior. You can see this ship here. It's trying to get to the Promised Land, trying to get to the Foundation. There's nine torches on shore. See, sometimes we're, we have a destination, we have an expectation of the future, but by trying to project the expectations of the future, we're prolonging the grip of the past. So we're being held in check, tempering ourselves, developing our skills, trying not to crash on the shore, trying to maintain the, um, the structural integrity of our being, trying to maintain our course towards the promised land. But the promised land isn't ready, so we got to hang tough and we got to be in the here and now. Chop on wood, carrying water, um, the mindfulness of this moment, the felt presence of experience. And if you think about this card on the cut and everything that's going on, we can see there's a cultivation of your passion. Now, if we get to, let's go over to the chart here. All right, so my little grunkle, my little grephew is calling me. Aaron! I'm doing something, I'll be out in a while. Okay. Um, so we've got this chart. I pulled up a chart for Virgo Rising. Now this is uh, a chart for today. The new moon in Leo was a few hours ago. Now if I'm doing an astrological analysis for an individual, I use the Porphyry House System. I utilize Western Tropical Astrology and a lot of other methodologies. I'm non-denominational. But for a general reading, I decided to use whole signs just so we could keep the sanctity of the 12 in of the zodiac so the dynamics can be um, understood where they are in relation to us. Now, if you're Virgo rising, Virgo sun, Virgo moon, you got a bunch of stuff in Virgo, you can apply that understanding through this cipher. And I'm going to break it down for you as best I can. So first, tell us Virgo right now chart ruler Mercury. If you're Virgo, your chart or your um, signs ruler is Mercury. Now Mercury in Virgo is the highest expression of Mercury in this world. It brings the metaphysical into the mundane in a way that no other sign can. Um, the positive to that is that it can share that wisdom with others. It can be of service to this world, can bring heaven to earth. The negative of that is that it cannot break free of the paradigm of the echo response of that which is known. And you can see in the quincunxes between Virgo and the opening transformational quincunx of uh, Aquarius will be break free out of old paradigm is um, completed in the creative um, originality of Aries. So uh, these dynamics, this Yod dynamic is everything to the Virgoan archetype. But you don't have to just settle on one dynamic, you can look at everything. So let's focus here real quick on this Leo moon. Now Leo, 12th house to Virgo, it's the spirit of Virgo is forged in Leo. 
and the Virgo is trying to bring forth the purity, the, um, the sanctity of that spirit into this world, but the world has other plans. <laughs> so it is a um, battle. And this is where the battle of belief comes in with the understanding of what has been known, and that's the square between the opposition we find in Gemini Sag. We'll get into the nodes and stuff in a second. So let's focus on this north or this um, new moon. So earlier today, the new moon was at 23 Leo. And we have uh, Venus in a balsamic phase conjunction, though she's retrograde to this new moon. And we have black moon Lilith in a new phase conjunction to the new moon. So we have this stellium in the 12th house of Virgo, the spirit. So you may have had a lot of dreams, synchronicities, uh, realizations, remembrances. The symbology of life might be speaking to you. So when um, Venus is retrograde, and it's been for a while here, she's been she was stationed for about 11 days at 28 degrees Leo. She was in a yod with uh, Neptune and the south node, ruled by Venus. So it was coming to terms with true value in the ways with which we have loved ourselves, loved others, loved learning, loved this world, loved um, the foundation from which we've grown through. How can we come back to an, uh, into alignment with ourselves, recalibrating how we've compromised this um, Venusian energy within ourselves for the expectations of others, for the polarity of the world and the obligations and what we had to do in this world? How have we been forged through the deceptions, the uh, disappointments, the enemies without with which we had no idea they were even there because we were too busy trying to be of service to ourselves, of service to others in a way that was meaningful. Trying to make an understanding of the world and the complexities around us, the things that were rising within us. How did we lose sight of all the deception, all of the um, programming of the world around us? How did we compromise the authenticity of ourselves for others? So that could be one of the ways that this Venusian energy is coming through you and it's coming through in the way we're relating to ourselves, relating to the values we were ingrained with and how we relate that with this world around us and others. Now, Venus here in the 12th house, you are um, rediscovering the purity of your authentic expression, the child within, and you're rewilding through your intuitive impulses here. You know? We have to move forward in life, and the, the life demands ego stands strong because other people, they can't speak the language of spirit. They can't speak the... Um, the divine feminine language, the, um, the awareness of the symbology of the potential. They need the facts. They need what's here now. So that new moon, it's a new emotional awareness that you might be gaining through spiritual practice, through meditation, through wilderness, through being isolated. Maybe things are speaking to you differently now. Or maybe now you want to take the fire of yourself and you want to come out of isolation and bring it forward into the world around you because after all, the 12th house here, this is what everyone sees, what everyone feels. So a lot of people may be feeling this charge within you. And you may be feeling it within yourself. And there's a cultivation process always. But now it's when the cultivation meets the realization that the child within can be reborn. And that brings in those aces, brings in the conflict as people see the change. It brings in the awareness of your own power, brings in the awareness of where you want to go from where you've been 
in how the lack has held you back. When you stand in your power, when you move with your own conviction, you show others how to do that, and you benefit everyone by doing that. So we've got this trine with the North Node in your eighth house of transformation here. Now the North Node was trining the new moons, trining Black Moon Lilith, and it's trining um, Venus here. Now with Black Moon Lilith being here in a new phase conjunction, it is the repression of the feminine, the anima within us that we could not show others because it threatened them. It was the, um, the soft side of us when we tried to show it, it was shut down. It was too threatening. It was misunderstood. It made other people uncomfortable. Or when we came into the power of realization that other people were living through their shadows and we tried to stand in our power, other people couldn't handle it. It was the taboos of those things we wanted to speak and share that they could not accept or they couldn't hear. That's coming through now for us and we can stand in that power. We're um, coming into the awareness here. So Black Moon Lilith turned back upside down but balanced here or right side up, but in a balanced relationship to the self. So that north node trining, as well as Chiron trining Venus and this new moon. So we're healing the wounded mind. We're healing our um, authentic expression, our sovereign individual expression, so that we can be of more service and more balanced to a calibration that honors us. That's how you bring heaven to earth from within out. Then the reciprocity of the world and the resonance of the elements of psyche which come through everyone else starts to flow towards you. So we've got the south node down here sextiling this new moon. And again, that's the values that we've cultivated in relationship, not only to ourselves, but to the world, to others. And here we've got Ceres, which is another Virgoan archetype. It's the harvest of this values, the harvest of our efforts. It's the harvest of our mistakes and our successes. How do we optimize that in a way that benefits us? Because we can always find ways to benefit other people. But you gotta feed your own belly before you feed in others. Otherwise, you perpetuate the four square of the tyrant, victim, martyr, savior. Let's hit this other uh, Virgoan archetype here real quick, Vesta. The passion, the hearth fire, the... Um, what information, how has the debris of the information field of science of um, our scholastics of our religions of our governing bodies how has that data shown you to be false how has the debris of that cultivated a sense that you need to trust and find the power within yourself how do you take all that not falling into nihilism but using that experience to cultivate yourself so that you can be the authority for your own life and show others how to do that through balancing the heart with the mind all right, so now let's look at this. Um, well, let's look at the square here. We've got Uranus, Jupiter squaring Venus. Uranus, perfect square with the new moon in your house of God. This is the wisdom house, the higher learning. What is it all for? What is the true value of everything you've learned, how you've experienced life, how can you transform that into a higher awareness that you can bring into form through being and embodying that knowledge? The living gnosis. So this Uranus is um, the higher octave of Mercury. It's trining Mercury, but it's also trining, and it's going to be a perfect trine with Mars. It probably is right now while I'm recording this. And you've got a grand Earth trine when you um, add Pluto into the mix especially as Mars um, climbs into the 25th degree thereabouts. So this grand earth trine, it's in the house of wisdom. It's in the sense of self. 
the instrument of the self, and it is in your house of self-expression, creativity, fun, children, romance. So there's a lot of transformation. Maybe you'll be traveling, maybe you'll be communicating, maybe you'll be writing, maybe you'll be speaking, maybe you'll be sharing the wisdom you've accumulated through a felt presence of experience, not through reading the books, but actually uh, digesting what that is and bringing it forward in a way that can be of service to others and it honors you, honors your experience. So there's a lot of power here with this Grand Earth Trine. And uh, with this square, it is the power of your authentic beingness. Now Uranus is a higher octave of Mercury, or so it's said. Hermes Trismegistus, the messenger of the gods. But Uranus is Prometheus, holding the fire, the truth. And it's the truth that hurts because a lot of people can't handle it. When you know something no one else knows and no one's interested in hearing it, it hurts. It's, um, it tests us. Can we still hold the same value or do we just drop it because no one cares anyway? Well, it's um, holding the fire of the self without burning the self of the world around you. Prometheus gives us that information, gives us that spirit. And that's what we see with these depictions. And we got those two moons, you know, and it's like we're bringing our emotional understanding into the awareness of our passion and we're cultivating it in life. So Uranus comes when Saturn needs to die and be reborn. Look at society, look at structures, look at traditions, look at teachings. They all have a shelf life. They begin to crack and fall apart and fade. And the resonance of their truths fade with time. And as that happens, Uranus is given new birth, comes in and gives Saturn a new life, a new spirit. And that's how psyche um, collectively grows through us because Uranus is the collective memory, the collective wounds, but also the healings, everything in between. It's the Akashic field. So we're coming into awareness, especially you. It's got the square between the house of God and the house of spirit. So you're um, calibrating spirit without realizing it. And that's the only way it could happen, honestly. If you really think about it. That is the natural expression um, of Aries, which is 12th house to Taurus. So it's the spirit being realized through what we do through these impulses, through following our desire, which is the soul's evolutionary intention here with Pluto. So what desire have you repressed? How can you bring that into life? The world's falling, falling apart around us. It's trying to turn into a technocratic, transhumanistic control state. But how can you stand in the power of yourself, realizing that's what it takes to bring spirit to form? We need debris in order to start a fire, and the fire is the shadow within you, bringing it to awareness for others. And you don't need to march, you don't need to do anything unless you feel compelled to. But when you stand in your power, when you move forward in your authenticity, you're a beacon for others, you're a torchbearer. All right, so we've got that square down. We've got that grand earth trine. Now this new moon happened in the third deacon of Aries, or of Leo, which is a Martian deacon. We got Mars here in the third deacon of Virgo, which is a Venusian deacon. We've got the north node, south node dichotomy going on. We just went from the north node Taurus to north node Aries. So we are rewilding ourselves and realizing the authenticity within us. And we're bringing that forward. We're honoring uh, the feminine aspects within us so that we can be of nurturing service to others without having to try to be that. You know, when you heal yourself, you heal others by virtue of just being. So now we've got uh, Saturn on your descendant here, Saturn in your seventh house, bringing form to the uh, Piscean dream. Saturn is in disillusionment phase now, so the purity, the truth of our beliefs can be felt through the wisdom of our spirit. And we are able to express now in ways we couldn't before. And look around, 
I mean, look at the world around you now. People are expressing in all sorts of ways. How can you be the most authentic expression of yourself without jumping on the, um, the feudalism of spirit that we see as everyone breaks down into the finer elements? So now we've got, uh, let's get back to Mercury real quick here. We've got Pallas Athena coming into a balsamic phase conjunction with Mercury. Pallas Athena is divine wisdom. It is the higher intellect to marrying wisdom with mind. And that is essentially perception with power. That's true power. So divine mind is being realized here with Mercury. And this is also in a balsamic phase conjunction with Mars. So you are bringing your awareness into the passion of the self and holding that passion, knowing that you can cultivate that. It doesn't have to be used on the world around you or trying to fix something that's on the process of desolation and um, destruction. What is pure always remains. So how do you find the purity within yourself and cultivate that? Bring that forward into the world. That's what I feel we're doing here in these times, especially for Virgo. Now we've got Neptune here in your seventh house also, 27 you know, Pisces, in the Plutonic degrees. And it is in a um, transformative yod with the south node. So bring yourself into relations doing you in a new way, allowing for your transformation. Who cares about other people's expectations as long as what you do isn't taking or hurting another? You're living by the golden rule. If someone else can't handle it, that's their problem. That's their lesson. They're learning through your example. And if you look at, uh, let's see here. No, well, that's about it. I think we covered it. All right, so um, if you would like an astrological analysis, uh, go to my website and schedule an appointment. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching, listening, and being.